everybody. How you doing? I hope your Monday was uh, fabulous. Mine was pretty terrible, so, um, you know, that's that. But uh, So I apologize for my look. I'm like really washed out looking, so yay Mondays. So anyway, it's been about five weeks since I uh, last recorded and updated you guys, so I figured it was definitely time. I wanted to update you guys over the weekend, but I got stuck grading and then like crying about grading and, you know, like questioning life decisions. So yeah, it was a fun time. But anywho, um, just a little update here. I'm uh, doing really well. I'm The last video I did, I, I was at 50 pounds lost, and that was my big goal. So on the day of that video, I set new goals for myself, and basically they are about to, to lose about four pounds a month until I hit my one-year mark. Um, and uh, just last week, I guess, I hit... Um, I hit the seven month mark. So, so since the last video, I've, I've lost like four, four and a half pounds more. So I'm doing, doing well with achieving that goal. Um, it wasn't easy to, to begin the month. Let me tell you, I, some big changes happened this month in my diet. Um, so as you guys know, April 1st was Easter and a few days leading up to that. And then starting Easter, I was just eating like crap. Like I know, you know, they say when you go to your, uh, nutritionist appointments and the social worker before your surgery, and when you look on the forum and everything, they always say that they fix your belly, but they don't fix your head. And let me tell you, that is so true because you, it is so easy to fall back into bad habits. And I'm sitting here today and I'm actually sitting outside of Dunkin' Donuts because I went and got a latte. I allow myself whole milk latte, no sugar. All right, but it is I I if I was here a month ago, I would have been like, "Oh, okay, I'll get I'll get ugh, I'll get a munchkin or I'll get, you know, something." And I know it's like one munchkin, but I was noticing that my bad habits were really creeping back in. Um when I was stressed, I was looking to food. When I was at work, I was like, well, "What am I going to eat when I get home from work for a snack? What am I going to um, you know, I just was obsessive about it and to the point, to the point where I wasn't happy with that. Um, every morning I woke up, I would have one cookie, you know, and it was one of those really thin little cookies, but it was like, I needed that cookie and I was eating Easter candy and Easter desserts and stuff. And I was like, you know what? I know as a science teacher and as a person that sugar is super addictive, but when you fall back into that sugar habit, it is that much more obvious how dependent you can become because I needed it, you know, whether it was just a little Hershey kiss here or there or whatever it was. And I, I was seeing results of that on the scale. So I had to really take a, a hard look here. They always talk about our surgery after surgery, your stomach is a tool quotes. Um, and what that means is that your body, you know, it has, you have to work for this as well. You can't just rely on your on your smaller stomach to do everything for you, but you can use the tool. And, you know, before surgery, I would eat and diet and, and uh, eat perfectly and, and exercise if I want, you know, for a period of time, and I wouldn't lose any weight. And that was the frustrating part. And then I'm like, what am I doing? I'm falling back into bad habits. I wasn't uh, eating properly. I was still exercising. Yes, but I wasn't eating the way I, I should have been. And I, sh I, you know, that's not what I ever wanted from the surgery. I wanted to be able to diet and exercise the, or eat and exercise the way I want to, the way I should be and lose the weight until I make, get to my goal. So anyway, I decided I'm going to, you know, change it up. So a few weeks ago, a, a friend of mine who also had the surgery, who is feeling the same way, we were like, all right, we're going to do a few days, five days of the liquid diet that we had to do before surgery. So we did protein shakes uh, for every meal. We did broth, sugar-free jello. My friends were all making fun of me. They were like, you're not eating, you know, but, but I was eating. I was getting low calories, but it was what I needed. I was still taking all my vitamins. I was getting all my protein. And it kind of was like a way to reset my body. So by day four, I started introducing some like cashews and string cheese because um, 
I had to skip Zumba that first Tuesday that I wouldn't have normally gone. And I was really bummed about missing Zumba because I do look forward to it every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to up it to a thousand calories a day from, from the, the like mini cleanse. And I'm going to allow my, myself to have a thousand calories so I can go to Zumba. And I did. And that sounds like a crazy small amount of calories, but at seven months out, according to my paperwork, I am supposed to be eating between a thousand and 1200 calories a day. So I, considering how much I struggled with that cleanse, I clearly was eating way more than that. And I needed to not be. So I'm now back into a much uh, healthier calorie category for my post-surgery. And what I decided to do uh, after that five-day cleanse is I am eating bariatric keto. So um, if you're familiar with keto, a ketogenic diet, it's high fat, moderate protein, low carb. So I have to modify because I can only have 1,000 to 1,200 calories a day. And within that, I need to have 60 to 80 grams of protein. That's not a question. So what I do is instead of focusing on the fats and the, the low carbs, I focus on the low carbs and the protein. So I make sure I get 60 to 80 grams of protein. I'm only getting 35 grams of net carbs. That's my daily allowance, which is low um, from what I had been doing for sure. And net carbs is basically your carbs minus your uh, fiber and then there's debate about this, but uh, minus your sugar alcohols. Um, so, although my calculator doesn't always do that. So 35 net carbs about, all right? And then whatever I have left in calories I get from healthy fats. So that's a modification. The other modification with it is that I'm vegetarian. <laughs> so eating keto, vegetarian is hard enough. Eating keto, vegetarian, post-bariatric is a challenge for sure. But I'm actually really loving it. Um, I'm not starving. Yeah, there are times where I'm like, oh, I could really love a pretzel right now. But um, I actually feel really satisfied with my, my meals. Um, so like a little rundown of my, my day. I still have plenty of coffee uh, with my creamer. Um, sugars have been like you know, added sugars have not been a part of my diet for a long time. So like coffee, things like that. I use stevia. I've talked about it before. Liquid stevia is like my best friend. Um, I've also been getting into, um, monk fruit, which is another plant-based sweetener that has zero effect on your glycemic index, just like stevia. And these two things have been around for centuries. I mean, 800 years, I think was how long monk fruit's been used. So these are very well, you know, understood um, things. They just aren't mainstream because they're more, you know, expensive to make, I guess. So I've been um, experimenting more with those and that's really been working out. So my typical morning breakfast is I have like a overnight oats, but it's keto version. So it's actually not oats, but it's, um, it's got that like oatmeal consistency. So it's, um, let's see, it's, a tablespoon of plain Greek yogurt. I sweeten it with stevia. Um, you add milk. I use Fairlife milk. It doesn't have the sugar content that regular uh, cow's milk has, um, but it has the protein. Then I use uh, chia seeds. Let's see, hemp seeds. Which let me. T those are those are interesting. They're very earthy. <laughs> Kind of tastes like you're eating a handful of grass at first, but you get used to it. Uh, so the hemp seeds, um, and then I just have some extra, I put blueberry or uh, blackberries on it, like six blackberries. And that's my breakfast and it fills me up. It's delicious, uh, especially it fills me up because my stomach is smaller. So eating keto with the smaller stomach is probably even easier in that aspect that you don't have to eat like large quantities to feel full. Um, that's my breakfast, my lunch. I've been making this delicious uh, egg casserole, kind of like a crustless quiche with broccoli and cheese. And um, I actually followed a recipe from this um, couple that do keto. They're called Keto Connect. They have delicious recipes. I highly recommend them. My husband found them because he's been eating keto since January and has lost 30 pounds. So he's really happy with it as well. Um, 
So that's my lunch. I do the, the meal prep on the weekends. And then my snacks are almonds, macadamia nuts, string cheese. Um, if I, you know, have vegetables, I'll have some ranch on them, like on a salad or whatever it is. Um, I have made a, a deal with myself that I'm not going to turn down a vegetable unless it's like a potato. So a starchy, starchy vegetable I can turn down. But I don't want to turn down a carrot or a tomato because I do need those vitamins. And they're, they're good for me. And they might not be keto friendly if you're really strict. And I get that. But for my extremely modified keto, carrots and tomatoes are okay. I don't have them every day in large quantities, but they're okay. So eating keto is actually, it's vegetarian keto has been actually pretty easy. Um, I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. So, so far so good. I mean, next time I record, maybe I'll have a better, uh, grasp of it besides, I mean, it's been a few weeks now and I'm, I'm okay. We are going to, um, we're going on a little trip this, the end of this week because, uh, for a karate convention and that'll be the first time traveling. Traveling's always different when you're trying to eat healthy. Going out to restaurants are always, it's always a challenge. There's always options. Um, but even, you know, the other day I chaperoned prom and it was at the aquarium, Camden Aquarium, and it was great and lots of delicious food, but not really much for me. Uh, they had like penne vodka, which had a meat in it. They had uh, salmon, a beef entree, and a turkey station. So those were out. They looked good, but they were out. Then they had mashed potatoes, which were delicious, and rice peel off, and a salad. So I took no roasted vegetables or anything, which is kind of what I was banking on. So I just had a gigantic plate of salad with ranch dressing and a scoop of rice pilaf. And I mean, it wasn't the best dinner, but it was substantial enough that it filled me up and I was okay. So, so anyway, that is that. So, oh man, I hope you don't, I hope the video camera isn't picking up on the audible stomach sounds. That is one thing. Let me tell you that if you are considering the surgery, your stomach will be very loud. <laughs> I don't know why it happens, but I was proctoring SATs a few weeks ago and the room is silent and I'm walking around and my stomach's like, rrr, rrr. like it makes this such, my husband's always making fun of me. It makes some really weird sounds and it's just like stuff moving. <laughs> I don't know. It's very weird. I hope you can't hear it on the camera. But anyway, um, so that's pretty much, you know, what's going on with me, what's new. Um, still doing Zumba the three days a week. Love that. And besides that and the, the keto, everything else is pretty much um, pretty much standard. It's getting down to the end of the school year here, so it's really um, becoming a bit of a challenge. But that was one thing that I did want to mention is um, when I did start the keto um, I noticed that, and they say you could do like a keto flu, which is like where you don't feel well for the first few days because that sugar is addicting and your body wants it. It is more addicting than most drugs you think of. So I felt kind of like crap. And when I went to Zumba, I was really struggling. Like I, my stamina was pretty non-existent. So it took me probably four, four days to kind of get back to feeling normal. So that is something to expect if you decide to, uh, to do keto. So anyway, that is that. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will, next time I update you guys, I will, uh, let you know how our trip out to Colorado and how that all goes with the eating and all that kind of stuff. And this will also be the first time flying with a, um, smaller stomach. So I hope it doesn't bounce around more than, than normal. We'll see how that goes. All right, guys, I will talk to you soon. Have a great day.